Hey folks, Rick here, Lala Farm. So, uh, probably six or eight weeks ago, we started building a small uh, front livestock barn. Here's the complete walk. Hey, welcome back. So today we're gonna do a complete walkthrough on this livestock barn, the small livestock barn that we built up front. Um, to house the uh, pigs, cows, and uh, ultimately our Nigerian uh, dwarf bucks. We did, I think this would be the fourth or fifth video in that series, fourth I think. Um, a little windy today, hopefully uh, that doesn't impact the audio on this, but uh, this is, it is really windy. We started this probably at this point, it's been eight weeks or so ago, uh, and work has been absolutely nuts. So we have not been able to kind of do this complete video. My goal was to get the electric in, get all the plumbing in. Still have not gotten to that. Um, hopefully within the next few weeks, I'll be able to get that done as well. Then it will truly be complete. But for the purposes of this video, I'm defining completeness by, I got all of the walls in, the roof on, all of the stalls set up, um, all of the, um, uh, all of the panels, four by four panels are in, um, and the gates are installed. So we can technically put the livestock in here. In fact, the pigs have been here for about two, three weeks. They've been uh, in this barn. Um, so let's do a walk around. So this is entering the front area. So you'll notice this is right off of our front chicken coop. This is where our meat birds are primarily, the Versailles. There's Big Rodney welcoming us to his territory, followed by a few of his ladies. So this is the front. Now, if you recall, this was a, we started this whole barn with a four or five year old, four year old, five year old, uh, 12 foot by 12 foot uh, pole barn that we had built. Got a really great deal on it, had built it some years ago. Really knew it was gonna be a shelter, but we didn't know at what point and what we were ultimately going to put in it. Um, so it's been just sitting here, kind of as a bathing area for the chickens uh, for some time. So going in, you'll notice that all of the posts, those were all set in line with the uh, original uh, six by six posts off of the original pole barn. So all of those were set in line. There's a previous video on where I did that. Um, once those were set in line, once those were set in line, then I tied the exterior posts to the interior posts all the way around. That's what ultimately set up what was essentially lean-tos uh, coming off of that central um, uh, pole barn. Once all the posts were set, tied into the main frame, then we poured the concrete. So ultimately, the footprint of this is about 28 foot by 28 foot. So we'll walk around the exterior here. So all together, I've got five livestock pens in this barn. The main entrance is right here. What we've done here is just put some carabiners on a chain, no fancy locks. There's 
pull it through, lock it just like that. So here's the interior. These are pens that will eventually most likely have um, animals when we need to isolate them for one reason or another. When this is ultimately done, this will be completely open. The hogs we will probably continue to keep um, contained. But this will be the entrance. All of these fold fully closed like that. So when this is completely done, which will be sometime in the spring, this will be the entry into the barn from the pasture. So this is looking out toward the hard, the hard road. This will be one large pasture going down this fence all the way to the four rail fence out on the hard road and then it will follow the driveway and come around the camper and then cut over somewhere right around here large enough so that we can get the mower in and out of here without any problem um, but this will be this is a really mature um, bahia grass uh, field right here um, planted it about five years ago and we've just been mowing it um, about every other week uh, which is unfortunate because that's just a gigantic waste of, of resources in terms of of uh, grass that we could be feeding to the livestock but we've never had this fenced in to be able to put anything up here to feed on it so that's what uh, this pasture will be so ultimately we'll have two cows two pigs and our nigerian dwarf bucks which right now there's three of them so the livestock will come into the barn via this gateway. In the middle right here will be a round bale during the off season when the grass is not growing. If we want to confine them, then we can confine them to any one of these side stalls. Now these are nothing more than six by six posts for support. The 6x6 six six posts are then tied together with 2x6x8s, by by 10s, and 12s uh, for horizontal support for the rails on the outside. And then everything is tied together, uh, the rails, then with 4x4 uh, four four sheep and goat panels uh, that are stapled into the 2x4s, or the 2x6s, I should say. Um, everything is... Uh, tied in uh, structurally uh, with uh, metal ties in addition to regular screws into the beams. These are the two pens that we're using right now. This is suckle foot. These are the waters that we're using right now. Hopefully within the next couple of weeks we'll have water in here uh, and we'll be able to use the automatic water. One of the design pieces that uh, we put into this is that when we need to clean this out, we basically made the uh, railings on the side um, large enough to where all we have to do is push the shavings uh, or the bedding out underneath that rail and then we can scoop it up from the outside. Um, just makes it a lot easier have, not having to bring a wheelbarrow in here. It's easier to scoop it from the outside than it is in here. Um, this here is another one of the pens. This is the biggest of the five pens. Still got my tools in here from where I'm working. And over here is pork chop. So pork chop is the one from a few weeks ago. You saw the short where he was dancing uh, over the water bucket. He's doing pork chop. On the other side, we have two gates on this passage. So we have identical passages on the boat on both sides. On this side we have two gates. So this is actually a catch pen. 
so that when we bring new animals in we can load them off the trailer or take them off the trailer and put them into this area therefore if we need to do any kind of um, any kind of inspection you know we can get in there with uh, with some um, push panels to kind of trap them against the sidewall so we'll be able to take some push panels in this catch pen push them up against the side walls do any um, kind of visual inspection we need to or whatever we need to do uh, if it's give them some vaccinations up here we can do that um, whatever we need to do these gates fold in flush here we back the trailer up, open up the sliding gate on the back of the trailer, and we can also load animals from in here as well. So when we need to take hogs for processing, take um, and either of the steers for processing, um, makes eat, loading them into the trailer very easy. We can trap them in here, close this gate, push them into this catch pen, and then load them directly into the trailer. Um, if we have animals that need to be in isolation, we bring new animals home, for example, from a sale, unload them, bring them in, and put them into either one of the isolation pens. You'll notice that they're separate. They're not abutting either of the other pens or any of the other three pens. So these two, this one and this one, are both isolation pens. This area out here is where Lala keeps the feed. Um, also... Uh, Boone and Betsy also get fed out here um, So uh, This is kind of like just a general storage area for feed uh, Tools equipment that need to be out here um, Chickens are getting fed out here now. There's a chicken feed So we've always had that bucket just kind of shoved into the into the chicken coop over here So now we've got it in the bucket up here. That's covered so it's worked out well notice from the inside this dark post here that is the original lean or that is the original pole barn structure so for about four years five years that's all that stood here was was that pole barn structure so this whole entire new structure was built off of that, essentially using lean-to construction. It's really windy out today, and that was one of the things that, uh, one of the concerns that we had was making sure that this is built to take uh, good solid winds. During hurricane season, it's not at all uncommon for us to have um, episodes with hurricanes that reach up to 60, 70 miles an hour fairly regularly um, and then if we have one that comes in that's a name storm um, it could be significantly higher than that um, we've got heaters in here for the pigs you know anybody that's seen any of my videos in the past understand uh, that I really don't like these um, uh, poultry heaters uh, that's what that is but that is a premier one plastic poultry heater um, that I really really love that product we're going to be doing another video on that very soon um, because we wanted to test that before we did any review on it positive or negative uh, to kind of get some get some kind of history with it we're super super pleased with how that has uh, how that has worked and in closing you'll notice that these ceilings or the, the roofs on here are very low that is by design and you'll see right now why we've done that we're in florida we're in northeast florida it is very common that we're that we get very hot sun i'm filming this at 12 30 in the afternoon so the sun is nearly directly overhead when we built this what i wanted was low roofs with a low trajectory so that when the sun hits it what we're getting is is this side will have direct sun this is the uh this is the eastern facing side of the barn we'll get direct sun early in the morning and this side will be completely in the shade as the sun moves from east to west over the course of the day later in the afternoon this side of the barn will be in sun but it will be really late afternoon 
whereas the eastern facing side will be shaded and if you look at where the sun is right now well in the winter so the sun is more to the south the only area where there's sun right now is on this southern facing side so these three pens in the back really are not getting any direct sun at all so the design has kind of worked uh, for the purposes that we wanted it to however um, Lala has started something uh, which we thought was kind of funny um, so these are Lala's documentation of people hitting their heads just in the short time that we've been using this. So Papa hit his head 12-4-21. Rick Isaac, 12-5-21. So that's the day after. And then there's a whole bunch of them over on this spot. Mom, so Lala on 11-14. Uh, uh, Rick Edward, that's Little Rig, 1114. Papa, every day since we started. <laughs> I didn't even know she put that in there. Every day since we started. Watch your head. So all we got left in here really is the water and the electricity. Um, the water's here. I ran a water line from that building right there, which was built as a dog kennel, and it's going to be our bottle baby goat nursery. Uh, future video on that coming, so... We still use it from time to time as a dog kennel, but not as much as as we used to. We used to have them in there all the time, uh, but that's going to be basically reserved just for our bottle babies now, um, so that we don't have to go all the way out to the barn. So here's the big girls. They're getting ready to pop literally any day now. There. This is where the uh, water will come in. It'll be one inch pipe that will go throughout this. Um, all three of the ones in the back will have um, hog uh, waters on it. Um, they look like that. That's the nipple. And then, I'm not sure, somehow it'll probably be interchangeable. We may use the same um, stainless steel um, waterers up here that we've got out in the back barn we've done videos on that in the past uh, we may end up putting both a hog nipple as well as the stainless steel waters up here not really sure yet um, somehow we may make them try to see if i can figure out a way to make them more interchangeable uh, the electric i'm still going to have to go rent a trencher for just a few hours here when we built the house we had a 220 and a 50 amp service also run out to this building so that comes into this panel here so this panel will feed um, not only this building but it will also feed it's never even been never even had a breaker put in this box but the power's there it's a 50 amp line it's a 50 amp circuit this will be the this will be the bottle baby nursery in here um, you see we kind of have used it already in the past um, had some kids in here uh, these are farrowing heaters used for pigs um, those will provide a heat source in here ground up so uh, these things great great deal good friend of ours got these so that we'll be using these in here uh, as the primary heating source from the ground this is the complete walkthrough hope you found this uh, uh, informative um, it's about eight weeks in the making uh, to put this barn together construction wise I only worked on it on the weekend so I've got probably a total of 10 days of work into this structure if you like the video make sure to leave a comment down at the bottom if you don't like the video tell us what you didn't like about it um always appreciate uh, our subscribers you would so much appreciate y'all dropping by uh kind of following along with us uh on the farm um brings me to the end folks always remember treat others as you would like to be treated lala farm out